Good morning. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Good morning. So just so you know, right up front, this is what it looks like to be totally unprepared for the day. I know I got uh, Cindy's here. Cindy, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And Mashid, who else is here? I know there's more. There's more. So what are we going to do today? Look at this. You want to see what I'm going to do today? Hey, Jesse, good morning. This is my to-do list. And that's just the start. Good morning, Barb. Good morning, Facebook user. Actually, good afternoon. I know it's Frank. Good morning, Frank. I know it's Frank because it's a good afternoon. And that's because he's like many hours ahead of us. All right. So, yeah, like I said, today is going to be a totally unprepared day. It's totally your day. Um, what am I doing? You know, I have I have, <laughs> I have 16 shirts to stitch today. I have um, I have to pull all my bookkeeping documents together and get those off to the bookkeeper so that she can do her job. Um, I'll, plus the household stuff. You know, you got the laundry. Uh, you got to do the floors today. Um, oh, and Bella and I, we want to go to the Salvation Army to look for hard to hoop things for my EEM, Everything Embroidery Market class next month. Yeah, I know. Just crazy. Cindy and I are working on a project also. I'm doing um, for Applique Getaway this year. I'm doing two classes on freestanding lace, a beginner's class and an advanced class. And Cindy is doing these little quick tip videos for me regarding freestanding lace. And her first one is just absolutely wonderful. All right, people. So like I said, this is your day. What do you want to talk about? I'm right here. Got any questions? Um, so, you know, I was thinking everything you know it's, it's been one of those weeks where you uh you start out with really good intentions and then things start flipping over and flipping over and flipping again and you don't know which direction you're going in that's me i have no clue what direction i was going in all week all right so you know i'm i'm thinking and i'm thinking i'm thinking now cindy came up with a really great idea she said that i should uh, talk to you about what it takes to prep for a class. Um, yeah, Cindy says she's excited about the applique getaway classes too. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. You know, in fact, why don't we talk about those classes? Let's. Um, Machine the classes that I'm talking about for everything in embroidery market. And um, applique getaway. Those are in-person classes. Those are both uh, events, embroidery crafting events, uh, held for the prosumer, the home user. Um, one is in Apple. Excuse me. Uh, everything embroidery market is in Biloxi. I can, you know, because I'm so unprepared. Um, I can get you, I can get you a website. I can get you a link. Yay! Every thing embroidery market. And that's a copy. Who is that? And paste. And let's get the applicate getaway. Applicate. I don't think they have their 2024 stuff up yet, but it will have the dates and the location. Copy. Paste. Ta-da! Let's go back up. Um. Yeah, Cindy's also saying not only prepping for the show, but how do you get invited to teach and what is the cost of teaching? Well, let's let's address the cost of teaching first. The cost of teaching is everything you put into the preparation. 
for example, um, at Everything Embroidery Market, I have a display table that I'm putting together, or I have put together. Let's see if I can pull that picture up for you. Do, do, do. Oh, you know, this is just, this is just kind of a stalling kind of day, isn't it? Where is that picture? Where is the show and tell? Oh, there it is. There's that. And copy. Oh, oh, oh. I can't paste a picture in here. Hey, Frank. Can you hear me now? Let's see, how are we going to do this? I'm going to put that down there. We're going to open up this. We're going to do that. Totally unprepared. And paste. And crop. And make it bigger. It's cold and rainy day. That's why I'm working in the shop. 144 3D caps. Oh, Cindy, speaking of 3D. Speaking of 3D, um, there's word on the street that we may have a new foam provider. Hopefully everything works out. Our friend, Jason Armenta, is developing a foam product. Where'd it go? What is that? Want to see that again? Yeah. Oops, I think I did that wrong. Yep, got distracted. Here, let's try this again. Stop the screen. Share a screen. Entire screen. And share. There it is. There it is. That is, you know, that took ages uh, for this display table for example i have the four by uh two by four table but i used a print and cut vinyl product i know um he's working sorry jumping back here cindy he's working on a 3d foam that um, obviously is made for embroidery is very dense so it holds up but it tears away cleanly the idea is to virtually have no cleanup afterwards so um i think they're really close now thank you so um i used a print and cut uh vinyl product here each one of these boards you can't even see what I'm pointing at, can you? Do, 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 apply sardines. Get rid of that. So each one of these boards is a um, compilation of work that I have done. Um, and the hats, Barb, you know this. This is the, uh, the hat racks. These are hat racks that I found online. Oh my gosh, they can be quite expensive. Um, these are table standing racks and they're actually designed to display and hold um, like four to six hats on each level. Well, I just needed them to hold one hat for display purposes. So if I were to add it all up and these display pieces, when I went looking for them, you know, you do a Google search. Hit me up after the afterwards, and I'll tell you where I found the um, the hat racks. Um, the hat racks. When I went and looked for them, they were like a hundred and some dollars each. And I'm going, I'm not paying a hundred and some dollars each to display hats. I'll just throw them on the table. Well. I got these for $48 each. So $100 for both of them. Does that justify it? Um, 
And who knows, I may never use them again. In that case, I'll sell them. Uh, but right now, the, um, the boards are using that corrugated plastic. You've seen uh, uh, people use them for like their garage sale signs or whatever. Well, I stitched all of this on a white felt and then used a double-sided sticky tape to make it all happen. So let's see. Let's do some math. Oh, and um, I think it was $19 for the stretchy cover. So we've got, and we're not counting the cost of the, the embroidery because, you know, that's what I do. So we got uh, 48, 100, 120, 120, 140, 160. Each hat, remember, we're not counting the embroidery. So each hat, that's 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. 80 so 200 dollars, and that is just for the display that's not for anything of the class content so my class content uh one of the classes i'm teaching is uh basic machine maintenance well i'll bring my own machine maintenance kit I'm bringing my flatbed machine so that we can talk about machine maintenance for your home flatbed machine. And they're loaning me a multi-needle. At least that's what's in the works. So that class is virtually uh, is virtually free for me to teach. Uh, it's just the knowledge, passing on the knowledge. Though I am, I do have a um, machine maintenance kit that I'm going to give away in that class. It'll have all the, you know, all the little supplies that I've uh, put together and accumulated. Um, the hard to hoop class, that one's relatively, that one's relatively cost free. I go to the local thrift store, you know, your Goodwill, your Salvation Army, and I pick up things to stitch on that are low cost. Um, or I go to the Dollar Tree, dollar twenty-five. So that class is going to cost me about maybe twenty dollars in supplies. And then the last class I'm teaching there is um, is um, a YouTube kind of class. It's a uh, how to get started in creating your own content. Um, trying to get started in your own content. And with that, again, I'll bring my own equipment. So it's all stuff that I've already, I've already got. So there's no additional expense there. Um, and then just the time and effort to prep the presentation for these classes. Now, uh, for the applique getaway, the, the freestanding lace classes, I'm making three freestanding lace design files Oh, lodging. Oh, yeah. Lodging. You're right. Um, going back to applique getaway, or excuse me, to everything embroidery market. I'm driving down, so that's a 14-hour drive in whatever expense that incurs. Uh, lodging. Well, you know, the hotels can be kind of expensive. So uh, the lodging about five hundred dollars, not including meals, but you know you're gonna eat anyways. Um, so yeah, so what are we rounding out? About a thousand dollars to teach these classes. And Cindy wants to know how how I got uh, pulled into this. Well, I I I can be I can be I'm not <laughs> I can be very outgoing in certain uh, areas, certain things. Uh, for example, as a participant, as a visitor to these events, um, I uh, know people. I say hello to total strangers. Uh, standing in line, we get involved. So my name has become known. And then of course, things like this, sharing information uh, in uh, 
social media and in live streaming, people see that and they get a feel for what you're, uh, what you're bringing to the education. Um, and then the powers that be see this and they say, listen, we got an opening. Really want you to, um, <laughs> Debbie, you are so sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Debbie. I always refer to her as Debbie Reynolds. I don't know, right from day one. Uh, she's a really awesome person. In fact, Debbie and I are going to spend some time together after Applicate Getaway. I'm actually going home with her, and we're going to set up a piece of equipment for her. Oh, oh wait, Barb, what have you got here? You're working on a t-shirt graduation quilt for a customer between housework and laundry. Perks of having a shop at one end of the house. I sure, I sure understand that. Okay, I'm going to step back for a moment. Debbie bought this piece of equipment almost a year ago. She has gotten it out of the box. That took a while. But she still has not hooked it up. So that's what we're going to do um, our two, three days that we're together after applique getaway. But Cindy, you're right. This is this can be this can be a, a fairly expensive endeavor for the educator. And um, most educators, it's not a paid function. My payment comes in the form of my free space on the vendor floor to show my display, um, which is a, depending on what your needs are, can be a six, seven, eight hundred dollar value. Um, and uh, uh, free classes. So I can take free classes. I do have I do have a giveaway. I, um, they've given me, I believe it's three, um, three registration fees that I can give away. So if you're going, if you want to go to Everything Embroidery Market, let me know and I'll hook you up. Uh, I haven't gotten anything for the applique getaway yet, but I'm sure something like that comes along. Um, let's see, what else have we got going? Uh, so yeah, it can be kind of pricey. Some vendors, vendor, yeah, they'll charge you for your floor space. Um, I don't necessarily have anything to sell. I do want to, I do want to present my goods, which is which is where this comes into play. But I'm not selling anything. My business cards will be on the table. Um, some giveaway pieces will be on the table. But I am not selling anything. Cindy Frank says hello. <laughs> but you saw that, I'm sure. Um, so as far as financial compensation, they're really, for most especially for these smaller shows, um, it just isn't in the budget. I am not a, a show operator. I do not set all of this up. Um, can you imagine what the financial commitment is to the venue to occupy their space yeah granted maybe on that day nothing was scheduled anyways but that doesn't mean they're going to give it to you free they still have their overhead expenses to accommodate they still have staff that needs to uh, be available um so yes these these shows are very expensive to put together and the whole reason Joe Hendel, is that you? Why, yes, it is. Joe Hendel is a friend of mine, local. I've done some embroidery for him. He's a great guy. Um, but these venues are really, really expensive. And the only way, 
the only way the show organizers get this paid for is through us the people that go to the events and participate in the event register to go to the event um occupy the host hell space if you're going to do an overnight um buy stuff from the vendors you know the vendors are there they need to not only recoup their expenses remember that booth is going to cost about seven hundred dollars they need to recoup uh the the materials and supplies that they bring with them so um and at, at applicate getaway and everything embroidery market the vendors are are allowed to sell so bring an extra suitcase uh but the whole idea is for them to make back their money it's a lot of work to put all of this together um so for those of you who are considering it do it just just come even for the day get excited about it take a class um buy supplies bring an extra suitcase fill it up uh what else is there do 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 da, da, da. i know i'm stalling here oh um research cindy was saying research you don't want to as an educator or a person that shares accumulated knowledge you don't want to share bad knowledge excuse me <coughs> you don't want to share bad knowledge or inaccurate knowledge but you as a person are not going to know if it's bad or inaccurate if it's something that you haven't used so um <laughs> we'll get to that in just a moment cindy so um your research is going to be important and not only finding that knowledge but put it to use and decide if it works for you if it works for you then you you can feel confident sharing it i would never suggest to somebody um what would i never suggest in the embroidery world i would never suggest to somebody to use coffee filters for stabilizer back 14 years ago i did that i used because somebody had said just use a coffee filter so somebody had suggested that it was terrible it was terrible but i did not pass that information on because i used it and realized i didn't like it and now i'm a proponent for a uh, stabilizer real stabilizer you know um it's one of the expenses of what we do all right so cindy is right cindy says to start a youtube channel get your feet wet less expensive to get started oh my goodness we'll get to that in just a second let's go back never mind we're gonna go back anyway cindy plastic wrap i forgot what people used it for uh they used it as a topper you know a salvi topper and then because plastic wrap uh, uh stretches it doesn't tear away clean and it, it's nasty i have one person that um uses um uh, and she actually does okay with this uh she uses sandwich bags as a as a patch backing you know so that she can punch it right out out of the plastic um okay paper towels people use use paper towel as a stabilizer but it's not very stable okay so let's let's go back here one of the classes i'm going to be teaching uh it's called um uh it's a youtube class uh itube youtube no itube we youtube and basically we're going to talk about 
uh, how to get started. Do you really have to buy $10,000 worth of video equipment to do a YouTube channel? Well, no, you don't. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about. The other half of that class is going to be um, what type of content do you do you really want do you really want to sit here behind the camera? It's a scary thing. It took me two years to get up the nerve to just sit in front of the camera so you guys can see me. I did everything. I did everything off camera. I would talk to you, but you would not see me. Yeah. Took me a long time to get to this point. So that's one of the things you don't have to, you don't have to sit in front of the camera. Just share your knowledge. Let's see. Oh, Cindy says, talking about patch stuff, I got some Gunnold Salvi Film 80. She's excited to try it. But work first. Yes. Um, Oh, speaking of that, Woody, hello. That's okay, Woody. We're here. It's just a casual day. I'm totally unprepared. So this is just all casual today. Um, remember, I've been working on using sewing thread. Well, and it's not on my list. I got to put it on my list. My little yellow legal pad. Um, Joe Kramer, who was a uh, a designer for Abercrombie and Finch, uh, did all that funky uh, vintage look that they're very very uh, well known for. Um, he sent me a file that I can stitch. I have uh, needles and I have the thread. So that's another thing. It's going to be on my to do this week. What are you saying, Cindy? Did I send you my two caps with the regular thread and then the thread you sent me? I don't think so. Put it on your to-do list. Get your yellow, your yellow legal pad out. And I want I'm with you, Barb. I want to hear about this gun old Salvi 80. I want to see what you do with it. I'm assuming 80 is making reference to the thickness. Let's see. We're going to find that out. So, all right. Woody, what are you set? You're, Woody, you're setting up a 3D printer? That's exciting. You're going to make any kind of fancy stuff for us on the embroidery? You know, make some back end uh, off market uh, gadgets? Romeo Threads. People, Romeo Threads, very good educator, has a uh, YouTube channel. I know there are several of you here that are familiar with his channel. Go watch it. Enjoy it. Um, Woody, I bought a new piece of equipment myself this week. When I do patches, when I do patches, I'm always disappointed with my hand cutting around the patch. And sometimes when you're doing 50 and 100 patches, you gotta make sure you got good you got you got good squeezing here <laughs> for all that cut around. Um so I got a desktop diode laser. Just a small little 20 watt piece. But it does have a working space of um, 11 by 16. Um, um, one of the things I before I before I 
press the buy button on this thing, uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure was that it would cut white fabric. Uh, which was very important because a lot of my patches are backed with white fabric. And I had heard that diodes can't. Um... Woody, I might need you to do a video for me. That uh, what that diodes could not cut white. But somebody, you know, before I pressed that button, somebody said, let me test that for you. And they did cut a big old circle on a white t-shirt. That was nice. Um, and I wanted to make sure, because my whole purpose is for cutting the patches. Well, you know, I don't do patches every day. So I wanted to make sure that somebody else in the house would have uh, use for it. And my husband and brother got so excited. So, yeah. And Cindy, um, we might do we might do some patches uh, after <laughs> after I figure out how to use it. Woody, as far as what uh, what functional prints they'll be doing, we'll figure something out. I'll throw something your way. And Woody says that he uses his diode for patch cutting. We might have to get Woody on here to, um, to show us how to do it. And, oh, sublimate a background to make it cut. We're going to have to talk about that, aren't we? But not today. I've got, oh, my God. You guys see this list, right? You know, Barb, I use my, I have a Cricut and a Juliet. And I use them both for cutting. But here's the thing. I still need to seal the edges. You know that a woven fabric will unravel on the edges. Do I have any? I have a woven piece right here. It's what I get for working at my desk. Can you see this? This is woven fabric. And all that, that edging, you know, it, it needs to be sealed. It needs to be trimmed close. And then you need to put a flame on it to seal the edge. Well, the diode color cutter is going to do both at the same time. It's going to it's going to uh, save me time. It's going to save me time and it's going to save me steps. What is a two or three step process is now going to be in one step. What have we got here? Karina, Karina from South Af Africa. Well, I've gone international. I know, Frank, I'm sorry. I don't think of you as international. I think of you as the guy next door. Carlina, she's way off in the, way off, way off south of here. Barb says she's, she backs hers with heat and bond. But see, that's still another another step. That's still a two-step process. It would work, but it's still a two-step process. And here's the other thing. There are times that I use felt for, um, for patches. Um, I use felt for patches. The felt doesn't come off that that uh, the sticky board doesn't come off the. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The 12 by 24 uh, sticky sheet um, to feed through the the cutter. Yeah, it doesn't come off. So I'm looking for other options, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. It was on sale. It's got a 30-day return. Can't hurt, right? Right. Well, people, we're at 35 minutes. We done chatted away our time. 
Romeo would be two steps from making a patch, but no cleanup. Yep, exactly. Cindy, two steps. And I'm trying to cut that down to one step. Um, so yeah, that's my week. Totally unprepared for today. But I think we did okay. Did anybody have any questions while we're um while we're finishing up here? Um I'll try to do better next week. I promise. I got uh, got a lot on my plate today. Uh, maybe I'll take a picture of the cutter, of the cutter, of the laser, uh, doing its test setup. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Jesse, you are so generous with your with your praises. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um. Where'd she go? She's still back in here. Carlina, Carlina, I know you said you got here late. You can watch um, on the rewatch. It'll be on YouTube under the uh, Quick to Stitch live. Um, there's others there. I hope you find something in there that you can use. If you ever have any questions, just, you know, just pop me a message and I'll get it and we'll take care of it. We'll address it. Carlina, thank you very much for sh for showing up today, for being here. And Frank, like I said, I know you're across the pond, but you're not international to me. You are, you are my friend next door, and you know you're so appreciated. You are all appreciated. I am so glad to see all of you every week. And the mere fact that I didn't post this to be, I didn't even post my announcement. Um but that you're here anyways, that you're here anyways, um, that just warms my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Going to go before I get all gushy. Let me get my uh, banner up here and say goodbye. Wasn't that fun? Do you have more questions? Do you want to learn something new? Join me at quicktostitch.com for coffee and conversation. And we'll talk about it. Embroidery machines, designs, and business. Hope to see you soon. Bye now. <laughs>